What is up guys, Greedy Knight here with some charge blade sets for the bonus title update. I'll be breaking down the set of skills, armor, weapons, and augments you should run for the final chapter of Sunbreak. It was a fun ride and this is a satisfying conclusion to our time in Kimura and Elgato. Let's get into it. Primordial Malzino charge blade is good. It has 320 raw and 51 dragon element. Natural 20 units of sharpness is nice, especially with the 20 extra units from Saw Augments, so you can get away with one level 4 handicraft decoration for 60 units of purple. The Rampage level 3 slot gives you access to Elembane, or you can use Valstrak Soul for Dragon Heart builds. Oh, and did I mention that this weapon has 3 level 4 slots, letting you slot in anything you want at max power? It also has a secondary effect that increases your lifesteal synergizing with the blood skills. I'll leave the calculations in the links down below, but from a first glance, Valstrax and Primal Charge Blade match each other in damage. With Blood Awakening in the picture, Primal Charge Blade is slated to be the better dragon pick for the new sets. This is the final meta roster. Super Spam remains unchanged from Sunbreak, only changing out Baryoth for Frosty Camp. Spinning Axe was a similar situation with the 5 element files and 5 hybrids, but everything changed when Tidal Update 3 and 5 attack. Chaotic Gormagala claimed the Dragon Hybrid spot in Tidal Update 3. Flaming Espinos and Amatsu beat their respective incumbents Rachna Kadaki and Mitsutsune in Tidal Update 5. And now Primal Charge Blade takes a crack at the Dragon Throne for the bonus Tidal Update. Overall, it was a decent meta progression for Spinning Axe, while Super Spam meta was still yet a good long term investment on resources. There is only one confirmed skill added to the Charm slash Augment pool, Frenzied Bloodlust. In context of Charge Blade, you cut this skill for Augments anyways, since the 3rd slash 4th bug never really matter when you have Wind Mantle with Wirebug Whisperer 3, and your Silkbind attacks all cost 1 bug. Weakness Exploit and Crit Boost did not get their level 4 equivalents, locking them to level 2 slots. Good thing the endgame sets have Crit Boost and Weakness Exploit baked into the pieces, so no need for a Charm. The Primordial Malzino pieces with Blood Awakening are the chest, arms, and legs, so that is what we are using. The Helm and Waist have good slots and decent skills, but Charge Blade sets have access to better helmets and belts. The feature skill is Blood Awakening, which provides a 30 second boost to both attack and element if you lifesteal at least 50 health. During this time, if you drain 100 more health for a total of 150, then you will receive a stronger boost lasting 30 seconds. The timer is fixed so the skill will reset once the 30 seconds is up regardless of whether you are still draining health from the monster. You do not have to recover health to activate Blood Awakening, just hitting the monster with Blood Right or Blood Blight will activate the boost. At level 1, the 50 health boost is 5 to both attack and element, while the 150 health boost is 10. Level 2, the 50 health boost stays the same, while the 150 health boost gives you 20 to both. At level 3, the 50 health boost is 15 to both, and the 150 health boost is 40 to attack and 30 to element. You need one level of blood rate to make this skill combo work. You get survivability through blood rate, you get more part breaks, resulting in more materials and afflicted materials at the end of the hunt. Thanks to the primal legs having part breaker baked into the piece. Blood Awakening's biggest weakness is that you need to be breaking parts or getting hit by afflicted hits in order to benefit from the boost. The quote unquote bad matchups will be Risen Monsters and non curio Elder Dragons because they will not cause you to be blighted and they will not break parts very easily. This is the Lifesteal Super Spam set. For Augment, you roll off the crit boost and attack up to aim for 1 Dragon Conversion and 3 Furious using the 5th Augment for Blood Right. The damage ends up being the same as the meta set, but with Blood Awakening, you get bursts of damage as you break parts throughout the hunt. You will play around the 30 second timer. Once you see the Blood Awakening is active prompt, you should have files ready to go. If you activated Blood Awakening using Blood Blight, then let your files rip on any good hit zone and pray for a break. Otherwise, aim for the broken parts to proc the second damage boost. The Lifesteal Spinning Axe set uses the Risen Kushala Helm and Risen Shigaru Waist with the Primordial Malzino Chest, Arms, and Legs. This set is a template for Element, Hybrid, Status, and Raw Spinning Axe. 
Unlike super spam, you cannot use the skills or slots plus augmenting method because you need every skill listed on the default armor. So you have to use the original augmenting method to get a skill without losing a skill on everything but the Risen Shigaru waste. You roll for one level of powder mantle, the rest of the augments are open to any relevant charge blade skill. If you don't opt for the full power of blood awakening, run Archfiend legs. The primal build gets every staple spinning axe skill at max power. Element scales better than raw, which is why the shown investment prioritizes element over raw boost, but just know you can slot in anything in the level 4 slots. Element crit boost and blood rate are placeholder skills as well. Compared to the Val's tracks build, the only difference is the investment in razor sharp slash handicraft. Primal charge blade gets more consistent blood awakening procs, resulting in more damage with this set. Without it, Primal Charge Blade loses to Valstrax by roughly 20 points. For status slash Flaming Espinos Charge Blade, you have to augment for one buildup boost. You have the space to run Evasion Charge Blade without trading off on Guard or Guard Up. Flaming Espinos can even run Full Powered Element, which is why I'm using it as the example for status. For non-element status weapons, use the slots that would be used for element skills to max out status trigger instead. You can use Embolden to be more point efficient, replacing your guard and evasion decorations, but only do so if you play solo for consistency. For the raw build, cut element exploit and element boosts to make room for attack and affinity. Since you are at max sharpness, you end up with a free level 4 slot which I've used for blood right to make blood awakening more consistent. The Rasa is used primarily against the Valstraxes because they nullify element on everything but the legs once they rev up. On a 25 cutting hit zone, the majority of your damage will be element. Dropping lower if you hit anything but the legs. Like if this video was useful to you, consider subscribing if you want to see more content like this. Comment down below anything I miss or anything you want to talk about. That's all I got for this one. Greedy Knight, signing out.